Hello everyone, it's me again, Corbs, aka Mr. 10 out of 10, and I'm here with a special guest today, none other than the lead vocalist and the rhythm guitarist from Ash to Dust, Mr. Robbie Matthews. How are you? I'm good. Well, you said Robbie. I've been called that forever. Like that's <laughs> my mom calls me Rob. Well, my mom did. She passed, but it's all good. I'm not gonna get mad. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm thank you thank for you taking for time, me. especially after work for being here. Oh yeah, of course. You know, like like we were talking earlier before the interview, it's crazy how like for me it's Sunday afternoon, but for you it's Monday morning. It's like it's so surreal how how the time is different and changing and everything. So thank you yeah. so much for taking the time out of your day as well. So it's all good. I've um I should have said this before the interview, but I I've, I've officially started annual leave for two weeks. So I've been all oh, the time in the world. Nice. <laughs> There you go, man. Now you can get caught up in reviews and interviews and everything else. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now, so, all right, I want to start at the very beginning. So my first question is, who or what inspired your love for, for music? Um, honestly, it was just kind of, for me, I think it was having an older brother that listened to like ACDC, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, you know, things like that. He introduced me to, to metal and it was just kind of one of those things that when I was a kid, which most people won't know this till I say it, but I actually started off playing drums and um, I played drums all through elementary school, junior high, I was a marching band, all that. So um, once I was kind of like, in high school teenager my parents found this you know semi-decent not the greatest it wasn't like a pearl or a yamaha but they found me a drum set um bought it for like i don't know three four hundred bucks whatever it was and i banged the crap out of it you know and then i wanted to uh start a band and kind of just follow in the footsteps of people that i listened to like you know tommy lee and um Neil Pert, you know, people like that. And then what, what happened was, is I was a decent of drummer that I could play like metal. I could play rock, but you know, all my friends wanted to play thrash. They wanted to play, you know, death metal was starting to become a thing. And I just, I couldn't move my feet that fast. So I was like, well, I'm not giving up. I, I'll, I'll figure something out. So then I, you know, being a huge Iron Maiden fan, I was like, well, Steve Harris is God. So let me go ahead and learn bass. So I taught myself bass. And, uh, you know, growing up, um, our manager, actually, Jason Shaw, he's our, our manager. Um, I've known him since like junior high. He had always, he, every time we'd go to a party, he'd just be like, bro, you don't really drink. You're not really smoking any pot. Like, you don't really talk to chicks i know i know you're not gay but you know as soon as you see a guitar it's like over you go grab it sometimes you don't even ask the person if you could play it you just grab it why don't you just play guitar and i was like and at the time like my two biggest guitar influences were dave mustaine and uh i can never say his last name but rob from death angel like those two are like you know gods to me and uh, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to play rhythm, I guess. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of amazing rhythm guitar players. I mean, there's stuff that, I mean, I just recently found out James Hetfield plays. And I was like, holy shit, like, that's James? Like, I thought that was Kirk, but it's James, you know? And the thing with me is, you know, growing up, um just in a household that listened to music my mom would always listen to music like she she and that's the thing she listened to i don't want to say she listened to metal but she listened to a lot of different types of music like abba um simon and garfunkel neil diamond so i've got that part of it and then growing up you know motley Crue was huge and twisted sister and iron Maiden, judas priest black sabbath through my brother and then thrash came along and there was metallica megadeth slayer anthrax the big four and i was like yeah this is this is what i want to do right here like this is you know because 
at the time I was besides playing music, I was playing hockey as well. And I got hurt playing hockey and that was kind of it. So I was like, all right, well, my dreams of playing with the Pittsburgh Penguins are kind of over. So I'm just going to stick to music and I, I haven't stopped since, you know. Nice. And, you know, I was, still, I was just, the question just came to my head now as you were talking. Um, see, because I was born in 94, obviously the, the, the birth of death metal, the birth of thrash, the birth of the hair metal bands, that was way before my time. So I want to know, right. is it um, like, how is, how would you describe the feeling of that era coming out when it did? Because it must have been amazing. It must have been mind blowing to hear that, that sound for the first time, that kind of music. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like my brother, I, you know, this is a memory that I'll always have, no, no matter what. Um, my brother, because I have two older brothers. I'm, I'm the youngest of my family, but I have two older brothers. And my one brother was working on my mom's radio. She had one of those big radios that you like open up and there's the record player and all that. And he just happened to be working on it. And the radio was on and uh, the local radio station here was like, oh, we, we got a new song from a band called Motley Crue. This is Shout at the Devil. And I was like, that's it. Like, I'm done. Like, that's what I want to do. I don't know what this is, but this is what I want to do. And just kind of growing up in that time, it was, I mean, honestly, you can watch any kind of video from any band, Motley Crue, Twisted Sister, Megadeth, Metallica, Death Angel, you know, all, just that whole time era between LA, San Francisco, when thrash was being made, you know, hair metal, all that. It was, it was an amazing time and good music too. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you guys, like a lot of people are like, wow, you listen to a lot of different stuff. Like I would have never took you for someone that listens to Snoop Dogg or Beethoven, or I listen to everything. I think to me, music is the one thing on the planet, in my opinion, that can bring anybody together. You know what I mean? Anything. It doesn't matter what race you are, what religion you are, you know, music is that one bond that you can go to a concert, you know, it doesn't have to be a metal concert. You can, you can go to, I don't know, um, you can go to Garth Brooks. There's a million people watching Garth Brooks on stage, but they're all enjoying it. No one's trying to kill anybody. You know, no one cares if you're black, white, purple, green, a Martian, lesbian, gay, bi, they don't give a shit. It's the music just is there. And I just feel like music is one of those things that it's a very rare uh, commodity that brings everybody together you know what I mean and just living that you know and I, I know that like you, you said growing up in the time that you grew up Nirvana was getting big and grunge no oh, grunge killed metal grunge didn't kill metal it was just you know it evolved because you think about it in the 70s there was kind of like disco and punk and then the 80s was more like hair metal thrash metal started coming around and grunge it's music is always revolving always you know and that's the one thing i like about the genre that i played i play thrash metal no matter what thrash metal is always going to be there heavy metal is always going to be there you know black sabbath retired someone's going to take those reins and they're going to run with it and they're going to you know what i mean so it's one of those things it's not just pop culture and hey stop biting it sorry my dog's chewing on my shoe uh but you know music is one of those things it's it's never gonna die it doesn't matter what type of music what style of music what genre it's always gonna be there and i think that you know growing up in that time totally amazing you know it, it was definitely a roller coaster granted i was you know young but it was amazing just to hear what was coming out or you know just different styles of music just kept coming out coming out coming out metal a british heavy metal invasion this that you know so it was it was really cool I, I loved it and i don't think that there'll ever be something like that again ever to be honest yeah well i gotta be honest when i for me it wasn't really grunge that blew me i mean i think i was still a bit too young for grunge but the but the era that i remember 
like opening my eyes like oh my goodness was new metal new metal yeah. for me that's why i was like oh my like we're talking so what slipknot corn corn uh, limbs yeah. limb biscuit it was just like i would never heard this style before so that's what blew me away initially yeah corn i i can say that as far as new metal corn is probably like the top of the food chain on that like dave they are definitely you know and, and not discrediting slipknot either they're amazing as well but i feel like slipknot's just a little different than corn but corn is like the grandfathers of new metal to me and and they're amazing i've met the guys they're all very down to earth kind of guys just you know not not you would think oh my god it's corn they're so huge you know please don't be an asshole but they're cool as hell like every band that we've had the opportunity to play with like nationally worldwide bands you know grammy nominated bands they're cool they're just people like you and i you know what i mean only difference is is they got more money than both of us that's about it you know they're just so down to earth people yeah well yeah so yeah so for me it was new metal but still i would have right. it's cool it's cool hearing hearing your um <clears throat> you remember the history of like the hair metal and the thrash metal because all I can do is put headphones on and pretend like I knew what it was like, but I have no idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I was so young that I wasn't on the, you know, strip in LA. I was way too young to be there, but from everything I'd watched and, you know, videos and things, it was just like, man, like that was so magical. I wish, I wish I was old enough to be there at that time. And, you know see motley crew for the first time see metallica for the first time so but i mean that's that's what's great about technology is you can find all that stuff somewhere in the bootlegs of youtube you know you go and type in something like you know i don't know metallica 1985 you know and you'll see them playing you know all these places that are clubs and places like that so yeah it's it was it was an amazing time for sure yeah so so the next thing i want to ask is where did the name ash to dust come from was it a collective idea or was it just we're gonna do this now? Uh, no well i mean for the most part when uh, uh i'm originally from arizona but i lived in utah for about i think it was four years i played in a band there called the nubis and our logo was really cool uh, my buddy John Campbell made it, but come to find out there was a band already signed called Anubis. So we were like, uh, okay. So then we changed our name to, uh, what was it? Malicious Intent. And then um, I basically was just like, look, man, I'm going back home. Like, I, I just don't feel like it's going to happen here for me. You know? So I got back uh, January... January 7th or January 10th of 2007. And from that time to about June or July, I was just kind of like, all right, you know, I have a few songs I can use that I wrote. Blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, all right, I, I want a name that's going to stand out. But at the same time, I want something that's going to relate to me. You know, like I like very macabre, dark, uh you know death serial killers things like that and to me the name just it i don't want to say up here in a dream because that's dumb like but it just kind of came to me i was like well you know i always tell people the, the basic gist of how ashton does became a name was i was sitting there one day and i was like trying to think of a name and i was like all right ashton dust like, that's cool i like that like it's dark it's you know it's medieval but at the same time, the meaning behind it truly is, you know, when you're born, you're already dying. You know, the minute you come out of the womb or have a heartbeat in the womb, you're already dying. So that was part of it. You know, as human beings, we all love, we hate, we have anger, we have all these emotions. And that's kind of what Asha Dust is, is just a combination of everything in general about humanity and life you know you live you die you're happy you're sad you know things like that and that's that's basically to me that's what the meaning of astra dust is yeah 
plus plus a lot of people say ashes to ashes dust to dust you know things like that so i was like mm, sounds good to me but we're not going to add ashes it'll just be ash to dust so that's that's basically you know i just kind of thought of the name and rolled with it and ever since then that's what the name of the band's been nice um so uh, okay so you said before that you always uh, that that you'll always be a thrash metal player like thrash it, like that, that's a genre but when yeah. i heard the album uh mm -hmm. demons within mm -hmm. it, it, it sounded a lot heavier to me than thrash um I'm, so obviously that means you incorporate thrash elements into your music correct so how does the so so what was the inspiration for the genre you currently play like like the heavier sounds what inspired all the sounds um well you know for the influences i think for me personally death angel megadeth sabotage um iron maiden you know, those bands really influenced me to want to play, you know, like that. I mean, I can't say that Metallica didn't influence me. They did, obviously, and they influence everybody. I just personally don't like the direction they took, but I'll always be a fan from Kill Em All to Injustice For All, bottom line. To me, you know, whatever. But for me, it was, you know... <clears throat> I was thinking about this on the drive home because I was like, all right, I know he's going to ask certain questions, this and that. To me, Death Angels Act 3 was like, that was it. When I heard that, it was like, that's what I want to do. That's the style I want to play. You know, these guys are completely badass, you know, and Megadeth will always be a huge influence on me as well. And that's why if you listen to like uh, the song Mother May I or the beginning of Demons is Twin it has piano in it, that's incorporating the sabotaged influence on, that I have. And then, you know, obviously there are three other members. So we're like a four headed beast. I write all the lyrics. I write, you know, most of the, the guitar with Omar. Chris obviously writes the drum parts. And at the time, it was Chris's brother, Travis, but now it's currently Ashley, our bass player, writes the bass parts. And it's just like a four-headed headed thing. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's try this with that. You know, um, what do you think about this? Well, I don't like that. Let's cut that. But let's put it on the back burner. We might be able to use it here. So, you know, I with the whole concept of Demons Within is actually, um, you know, I usually say this in interviews so people kind of get an idea of what the concept was for the album me and my daughter went through a lot with her mom she was a drug addict she was addicted to crystal methamphetamine and heroin so when you listen to the songs you listen to the lyrics it's a story about what me and her went through because initially what i wanted to do with demons within because i'm a huge king diamond fan I wanted to write a concept album, so to speak. So in a sense, Demons Within is a concept album. It's just not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, so like King Diamond is. But it's still somewhat of a concept album. It's about what me and my daughter went through. And yeah, so um, so yeah, that album and, 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 and thank you for giving it some, um, some very deep context when I was listening to it, yeah. the one the one thing I noticed was there's so many different sounds, so many different um, because I'm pretty sure in my review I compared you to Burzum, <laughs> the um, yeah. and like like you know it, like in the sense of whenever I listen to his music because I have his whole discography on my computer. When I listen to his music, he has something different all the time. It's never right. it's never a consistent sound, and I really like that. I remember I remember thinking listening to the themes within like. It's, it's really interesting how you're not sticking to one sound. It's just a whole bunch of different sounds put together. And so I just want right. to know, um, is that the same feeling you got when you made it or was it, was it a different feeling for you? Um, yes and no. I mean, for the most part it was, because the thing is um, currently we're in pre-production to re-record the first album. 
which was the self I guess it's a self titled it's ash to dust. So that was already done and whatnot, but the quality of it, because when it was recorded, you know, technology changes all the time. So I was like, Hey, I want to work on demons within and go from there. Well, at the time we didn't have a title for the album, but I said, I have all these lyrics. I just need to add some music to it. Let's do this. And it was just kind of one of those things like with mother may I, um, when I wrote that, it was more so I was trying to write a song that was looking through my daughter's eyes and see what she was going through. So I knew that it was going to be very emotional, very sad. And that's why I wrote the lyrics the way they are. But the music, I had an idea like, okay, regardless, it's, it's going to be a ballad. You know what I mean? So that's how it came out. But I've always, I've always loved the piano and I've always loved acoustic guitars. So there's always going to be that resonance of that in our music, but there's always going to be that, you know, cram it down your throat as fast as we can play and kind of deal. And, you know, like I said, having a four headed demon, we all have different influences and different ideas and everything like that. So when someone brings something to the table, we either try to see if it'll work and it does, or we take it, put it to, to the side and put it somewhere else in a different song or, you know, area of a song, a bridge chorus. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I, I'd I like doing is I don't want it to just be 280 beats per measure, every song, you know, cause then people are going to be like, yeah, I've heard this like case in point and, Whoever's watching this and you yourself, especially being from Australia, don't take this the wrong way. ACDC, everything sounds the same. You know what I mean? You can tell ACDC as soon as you hear the first three notes. And I love ACDC, don't get me wrong. But I didn't want to do that. I, wanna, I wanted to spend out and try to do something. So there's whether there's five songs, two songs, the whole album, there's something for everybody to listen to. Yeah, now that's really cool. Cause yeah, definitely. Um, Cause that was the first album of my, of my late night reviewing session I did. And like, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is, this has this element, this has that element, this has this. And I was just um, pleasantly surprised at how much you packed in. So I remember feeling that way. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so, all right, so. It's now 2021, and you just told me that, that you're reworking on your first album, self-titled. What Correct. does the future, or at least the most, or at least the recent future, uh, look for Ash to Dust? Um, well, you know, it's kind of hard to say just for the simple fact with COVID going around, the pandemic, everything. Nobody knows what's going on. You know, I mean, eventually. I think my thing is eventually everybody's just going to get really sick and tired of it and it, it's going to explode. You know what I mean? Like people are going to want to go to concerts. They're going to want to go see, you know, uh, sports and this and that. And that's fine. I'm all for it. Being a musician, I hate not being able to play shows live, you know, but the thing is for us, the, our number one priority and concern is our fans, you know, without them, this interview wouldn't be happening. I wouldn't be on misanthropic records. You know, I wouldn't be playing shows. So that's our main concern is just make sure everyone's healthy that, you know, whether you get the shot, don't get the shot, you know, people die from COVID, whether they want to admit it or not, that it's a farce, it's this, that, you know, I know people that have had it and I know people that died. So it's just really hard to say because with COVID, you know, you could get in a car accident. And they'll be like, oh, they died from COVID because it seems like, you know, hospitals get more money for this, that, the other. But as far as the future for us, I can honestly say it. It looks very bright for us. Um, April 10th, we're playing uh, Denver, Colorado, and we're playing with one of our, our label mates, Deadwind, who is also from Tucson, which actually our bass player is their bass player or I should say their bass player is ours because Ashley's actually 
originally in Deadwind and then came to Astro Dust. Um, <clears throat> Misanthropic is setting up uh, an East Coast tour from June and July for us. So we'll be out on the road for, I don't know, like two, three weeks, however long that takes us to get there and back. You know, we got to make sure we're safe and sleep and eat and energize and everything. We don't want to end up driving off the road or something. But I can definitely say that, you know, musically, like I said, we're, we're in pre-production for the album. So, or the self-titled. So we're going to have that coming out this year. Um, we, before we started working on the pre-production for the first album, we actually started working on the third album. So we have a lot of material and things like that, that, you know, we're working on, we're trying to slowly get shows, make sure that when we do shows, everything is, is okay. It's safe. It's six foot distancing masks, you know, the whole nine yards. I mean, I really haven't decided yet if, I'm going to get up on stage and sing with a mask or not just for the simple fact that, you know, masks sometimes are hard to breathe in. And if, you know, if it's just me and the band on stage, then I don't think I need to wear a mask, but you never know if, if, if it's a qualification that, Hey, while you're up there, you have to wear a mask, then so be it. I'm going to wear a mask. You want me to wear five masks? I'll wear five, you know, but I think that the future is looking very bright for us. We have, you know, the label backing us, which I wanted to show you guys real quick. Yes, I'm supporting Misanthropic Records uh, t-shirt that I have. But uh, it's been, it's exciting. Like uh, for for us, because <clears throat> obviously you being in Australia, I'm sure a lot of people are like, man, Americans are stupid and <laughs> this, that, and their government's retarded and whacked out and everything else. But one good thing about our government, um, they did send us our stimulus checks. So we got those. So I literally just went out and took my stimulus check and bought all kinds of merch for the fans. So we're going to have new t-shirts, new line of t-shirts, stickers, keychains. I have my own signature picks. Um, we signed a couple of drum heads that Chris used. So we're going to have a lot of different stuff um, for the store on our website and uh, you know, as far as, you know, our YouTube channel, go subscribe, guys. We only need like 10 more people, I think, to hit 100 to get that actual like official URL at YouTube. But, uh, you know, we're, we're doing everything the way we feel that we should be doing, but trying to be safe at the same time, make sure everyone else is safe, the band we're touring with, you know, things like that. So it's it's looking very good. I'm not going to say it's looking dim because I'm not, I don't feel that way. I feel like things are going to start opening up and people are going to start getting healthier and the strands of coronavirus are going to be, you know, we're going to get shots and, you know, pills or whatever they need to give us. Not saying that we're all puppets, but at the same time, if these people who are dying to see concerts and sports events and things where social is ha going to bars you know what i mean if that's what you want you're not being a sheet by any means by getting a shot taking a pill whatever if that's what your government's asking you know so our main concern is just to make sure that everybody's safe healthy and just keep continuing to write music play live when we can and go from there that's a really good outlook and um yeah i'm you know I love your hustle, you know, I love your drive, you know, you, and the fact that you spend your stimulus check on stuff for the fans, that's, that's, you know, proof right there <laughs> of your, your dedication, you know? Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, the thing is, is for us, I just want people, you know, cause <clears throat> I'm not just a musician. I'm a fan too. I mean, I, I bought, what did I buy? I bought two death angel shirts. <laughs> um, what else? I bought some other merch from other bands. So I'm not just a musician. I'm a fan too. So, you know, I want to be able to, I'm not saying that, you know, Ash the Dust is going to turn into Kiss and I'm going to be Gene Simmons and we're going to sell tampons and condoms and cell phones and, you know, whatever. But I think that when someone goes to a show and they enjoy a band they've never heard before, of course, they're going to want something. You're, they're going to go buy a sticker, a keychain, a t-shirt a hockey jersey whatever that band has to offer and you know 
we're sensible. We realize that we're not Slayer. We're not multi-million dollar band. So we're not charging $500 for a shirt. You know, it does cost money to make them, but we price them, you know, per how, how much did we buy? What's the design cost to make this and that? And, you know, I think our prices are reasonable. You know, it's not like we're trying to do $50 shirts when, you know, I know no one's going to buy them. So why would we sell them for that? You know, but it's all, it's, it's always going to be and always will be about the fans, you know? Well, I can't wait to get my hands on some of the merchandise so I can promote it as well, you know, wear it on interviews. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, (laughs) there you go. Um, Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, uh, I'll get your information, man. I'll, I'll send something the best I can. I know it's international, so I can send it tomorrow and you'll end up getting it in June. <laughs> it's oh, well, the way, the the way everything's working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So the last few things I want to ask you, just, just, to get, just to get your perspective, I'd like to know, in your opinion, what is the most, what is the, in your opinion, what is the greatest album of all time? Rust in Peace by Megadeth. Ooh, nice choice. That, I do love that album. To, to, to me, that, I mean, a lot of people will say like Rain and Blood by Slayer or, you know, oh God, Back in Black by ACDC, this and that. But for me, if I had to, if and I knew you were going to ask this question, I was like, I can't pick just one. So for me, it would definitely be like Number of the Beast, Iron Maiden or, or Peace of Mind. Shout out to Devil by Motley Crue, Rust in Peace by Megadeth, King Diamond the Eye, Death Angels Act 3 is what like turned my world around. That album and Rust in Peace are, will always be my favorite albums, bar none. Like they're, they're tied. And to me, as much as I love Dave and Megadeth, that, <clears throat> that album will always be like the album. I love Rust in Peace and I love... Uh, P cells, that's a good album. I mean, there's a lot of good Megadeth albums, but to me, bar none, Rust in Peace will always be their best, and it'll never be duplicated. And I think that that album there is what strives me to write the way we do, how we do, to get to that plateau. Like that's that's the unicorn for Ash to Dust, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like for me. I want to write Rust in Peace, or for some people, I want to write Master of Puppets, you know, but in the Ash to Dust way, not Metallica's way, not Megadeth's way, you know. So for me, yeah, definitely, I would have to say Death Angel Act 3 and Rust in Peace by Megadeth. You know, that's actually an interesting choice because for me, and I've always thought this, my two albums that I think are the GOAT, the greatest of all time, two at least metal albums, is right. Black Sabbath, Paranoid, and Led Zeppelin IV. There you like go. Me. Those two, yep. I've always held them on a higher standard than anything else. Like Right. And that, and that's the thing, you know, you, you can ask any Sabbath fan or any Zeppelin fan, and those two albums are going are gonna to be what they say, you know. And I agree. Par- like, the first Black Sabbath album, amazing. You know what I mean? Like that was people were like just blown away. They didn't know how to react, you know, and then you get paranoid and it was like, okay, it's over. Like this, this is the bar for heavy metal. That's the bar. You know what I mean? So, and same thing with Led Zeppelin four. I mean, there's not a bad song on that album. And that's how I feel about rust in peace. I can, if I was stuck on a desert island and only had one album that I could listen to and not skip a song, it would be Rust in Peace. Um, I remember watching a metal documentary once um, years ago, and one of the guys said, said heavy metal peaked with Black Sabbath. Now everyone, everyone just slows down, speeds up, does left and right what Black Sabbath has already done. And it's an interesting concept. Like it's it's you know, and that's the thing. Like playing, playing the guitar. There's only so many notes, so many riffs, so many 
chords that you can play on a guitar. I mean, I'm sure that I've played something some way and been like, okay, I know I've heard this before. Like uh, the song DDAM, that's, that's my daughter's initials. The very beginning acoustic part, I wrote initially wanting to put it in a, uh, like a, a ballerina thing that she could listen to and it turns around and plays music, uh, a, a music box. But as I was writing it, <clears throat> I was playing it and writing it. And, you know, when you, you write and play, it's, you know, do I want it faster, slower? What do I want to do? And I played it and I was like, shit, I can't, I can't play this. I can't use this. Like, like <laughs> come to find out it was, uh, oh God, what song was it? uh last in line by dio so i was like yeah well okay you know i mean it's it's basically the same chord structure i'm just playing different notes but it's literally the same same uh chord structure you know and that's the thing if you listen to like metallica and slayer a lot of their stuff is the same chord progression just different notes but it's in the same spot you know like, uh, <clears throat> for instance, one is the same chord progression, per se. The first, like, I don't know, 10 notes of one is the same thing as Welcome Home Sanitarium and uh, Fade to Black. It's just the way you play it and how fast or slow you, you do it. So, you know, and that's, that's the one thing about music is it doesn't matter what instrument you, you play it's always going to have something of somebody in there. And with Ash to Dust, bar none, you know, like I said, Death Angel and Megadeth are my biggest influences, but I'm sure somewhere subconsciously in the back of my head, Black Sabbath is there. Because without Sabbath, there would be nobody, you know, there would be no Ash to Dust, there'd be no Motorhead, there'd be no Megadeth, Metallica, anybody, you know what I mean? Black Sabbath is the the bar of heavy metal. They're the godfathers of heavy metal. Couldn't agree more. Now, now I'm going to end things off in a, in a controversial kind of fashion with the next question. What do you think oh is God. the most overrated album of all time? Um, ooh. Honestly, hmm. to think now you're like making me think i don't know i off the top of my head i guess i'd have to say metallica's black album everyone says that <laughs> <laughs> well then i don't feel so bad <laughs> like it's weird because yeah everyone says that's the sellout album like yeah sellout. that that's that's how i feel uh, you know well i don't want to say sellout because they made a lot of money for that album, but at to me was the beginning of the end for them. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. From what I've seen, interview wise, this and that, they all seem like pretty cool dudes. I mean, Lars is kind of a dick, I guess, sometimes. But the thing is, with you listen to like the first four albums, Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master Puppets, and Justice for All. It was all boom. And then I think, in my opinion, they got Bob Rock in there who produced Dr. Feelgood, Motley Crue. And that's kind of where they're, I don't want to say their downfall because, I mean, Metallica is the biggest band on the fucking planet right now. I can't say a bad thing about them. You know what I mean? They're, I, I would want to be in their shoes right now. I mean, come on. But, you know, the thing is, to me, I feel like that was their downfall album. You know, it wasn't as good as Injustice for All or Kill 'em All or, you know, I mean, when it first came out, everyone was, you know, everyone was hyped there. Oh, it's going to be the next, you know, Master of Puppets. And the first song that came out was Enter Sandman. And I was like, are you shitting me right now? Like, this is not Master of Puppets. I was like, I really hope to God that the rest of the album is nothing like this. And 
you know, and that's the thing. There's fans out there that'll tell you the Black Album is the greatest metallic album ever, you know. But case in point, you know, to me, I could say that, you know, like I said, Sabotage, Gutter Ballet, Rust in Peace, Death Angel Act 3, those albums there are always going to be my favorites, not only because they're musical masterpieces, but those were the albums that introduced me to those bands. Well, I can't really say Megadeth because I did listen to Megadeth before Rust in Peace, but same thing, Metallica. I love End Justice for All. I think it's a great album. I think Jason Newstead got screwed with the whole no bass thing. But I think deep down in my heart, if someone said, what's your favorite Metallic album? I'd have to say Master Puppets because A, that was the last album Cliff technically was on because uh, he wrote uh, one, of, one or two of the songs on End Justice for All, but he didn't record them. So technically, Master Puppets was Cliff's last, last album to be recorded. But also, that was the first album that I was introduced to by Metallica. So, you know, it's just one of those things. Is To me, I just feel like the Black Album's overrated. You know, it, it, one thing I find so interesting is, like, I feel like I'm the only person... And it, um, this might sound dramatic, but I feel like I'm the only person in the world who really, really enjoyed Death Magnetic. Everyone, no one talks good about that album <laughs> I've seen. I'm like, I love All Nightmare Long, Cyanide, Unforgiven 3. I love all right. those tracks. Like, yeah, and see, that's the thing. Like, for me, I really have not given Metallica a chance since, like, the Black Album. I mean, I've heard stuff off Load. I've heard stuff off Reload, Death Magnetic, you know, and... I will say this as far as Metallica, the last album they put out, I can't remember the name of it to save my life, but it was a very, very good album. It was definitely would, I don't want to say it's up there with Injustice for All, but if they would have put that after Injustice for All instead of the Black album, yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's the thing, like, I don't know what Lars was using on some of those albums for a snare, but that shit sounds like a tin can. It's so annoying. It's like, dude, you burn Jason on Injustice for All, your snare sounds like dog shit, you know? And that's that's one thing that everybody being a musician, that's like their thing. Is like their tone is the almighty to them. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't come into the Astro Dust studio and be like, here, I'm gonna tweak. Nope, don't touch my shit. <laughs> like, that's my tone. That's what I want to sound like, you know. So everybody has their preference, and apparently Lars thought it was a good idea to play a tin can. So, you know, who, who am I to say? Who am I to say? I, I'm not on that level, so he's got more money and fame than I do, so he must be doing something right. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with them in the future, because um, I know they record that horrible Lulu album. Oh, what, what an yeah, idea. I, <laughs> We won't talk about that. Yeah. Well, look, you know, thank you for being for being on for being on here with me, you know. You're a down to earth guy. Oh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate it. You know, it's like I was telling you, you know, I, I don't mind doing interviews. Maybe maybe it's because I'm not to that plateau yet where like other people are and they're like, uh, an interview, but I love doing interviews. It gives people a chance to get to know me, the band, who we are, what we're about. It helps you and, and your product. So, you know, I, I love doing interviews. I'll do interviews all day long if I could and whatnot. But I mean, you know, some people will be like, oh, you're a narcissist. You like talking about yourself. No, I just love music. It doesn't have to be about us. I mean, I'll throw something in there just to give you a taste, but you know, other than that, you know, I mean, metal's metal, music's music, and, you know, we can chat all day about it. So thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out of your day. I know our time schedules are completely crazy, and it's morning there, and it's almost night here. So, and you're on a completely different day. Like, that's still kind of mind-boggling. But, you know, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, 
very much appreciated to take the time out of your day and you know do this for us and misanthropic and and other bands and things like that and thank you so much for the review as well i, I really appreciate it you know that's the one thing like people I'll always be like, hey, if, if you want to do a review here, check this out. It never crosses my mind. And I don't, and please, everybody, I'm not trying to sound arrogant on this, but it never crosses my mind that someone's going to be like, you guys suck. <laughs> like, to me, I really feel like we have something that's unique and different from everyone else. And, and to be honest, every review we've had, you know, was good. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's going to be somebody that's going to be like, you suck. And then it'll <laughs> stab me a little harder, but you know, I'm going to write it as, as long as I can with all the positivity we have. Cause that just, that just grows us as a band, having all that positivity to be able to write more, you know, and just consume everything that we have at the moment. So, you know, but I enjoy it. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to, to do this for us. Oh, anytime. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I forgot to say before we go, is there any, is there anyone or anything that you want to shout out or, um, yeah. Um, appreciate. Um, let's see. I definitely, uh, want to say thank you to Alyssa LaBelle. She's the, uh, owner and, creator of lieutenantcreations.com. She's the one that built our website. Um, she did all our socials. She tries her best to, you know, upload things and this and that the best she can. But, you know, with COVID going on, there's not too much we can. But uh, there's that. I definitely, uh, guys, like I said, go find us on YouTube. Go subscribe to our channel. We're so close to getting that 100 likes. I guess apparently you need 100 to get the official url so go check that out www.officialastrodust.com that's our website you know eventually like i said in the next couple of weeks we're going to have a ton of new merch so you'll be able to buy that we do have a merch store on there currently it is a third party so it would basically be if you buy something they make it and then they ship it out to you so there's also you can always visit the website now and buy something um, all our socials are official Astra Dust, so Facebook, Instagram, things like that. Go give us a like, a follow, you know, share it. Um, the, that's that's the main thing that most people don't understand. That's why I'm very consistent and maybe annoying about getting to try to get people to go like our stuff and follow and this and that is because the algorithms. That's what clubs, bars, all those people, promoters look at. How many fans do you have? How many comments? Things like that. So when people do that, it helps us out. And in the long run, it'll help you guys out because if we get enough people, then we can say, okay, um, you know, 2.5 million people just liked our Facebook on Australia. Guess we should go go play there. <laughs> you know. And I, that's the thing. We would love to play overseas. That's that's one of the the things, you know, on my bucket list for sure is to try and get to other places other than the United States or Canada or Mexico. You know, was, I would love to go to Australia, Europe, you know, Japan, all those places, you know, not just to play music, but to like see the scenery and, you know, everything that's different from where I live to where you are or someone else, you know, because the world is... The world is a beautiful place. You just got to take the time to open your eyes and see what's there. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You know, again, thank you. Thank you again. Um, I love the band, love the album. And as soon as new stuff comes out, make sure you send it to me first and I'll review oh, it. Oh, yeah. Again. Yeah, awesome. For sure, I will. I'll definitely uh, give you maybe a, a recording or two for uh, the self-titles. We should basically... Um, like I said, we're playing Denver the 10th of April. When we get back, we'll start recording Chris's drum tracks on that. So I'm pretty excited. And then, yeah, well, that it, makes two of us. You know, yeah. And the thing is, the, the album shouldn't take too long to record because we know all the songs. We play some of them live. We've been really digging deep, you know, hitting it hard to get this album. It's just going to be the mixing and mastering. That's that's honestly the hardest part of recording because you got to sit there for hours on end. You listen to something, 
you know, through speakers and monitors and you put the headphones on and take them off. It's, it's a rough process, but you know, in the end, it's all for you guys. We want to make sure that whatever we put out, you guys enjoy. So, you know, if it takes <laughs> three days to record the album and four months to master it, well, I guess it's going to take four months, but you know, we'll definitely have that product out. And then I'm sure by next year, the third album will be out. We'll, we'll see. I mean, We've got some good stuff for that album too, but we're going to push demons within right now. You know, we were doing a good run with that before COVID. We'll uh, get that other album done sometime this year, put it out, but I will definitely, my friend, send you it so that you can review it. And uh, once we get all the good merch in, I'll, uh, I'll send you a little care package. So I appreciate it. All right. Thank you again. And um, yeah, I'll be talking to you on Facebook anyway. So this won't be the last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah for sure thank you guys so much for viewing this watching it um we love you guys hope to see all you guys very soon you know like i said we just got to get through this pandemic and make sure everyone's safe before we can start just you know, dominating the world one day at a time yep definitely and i'll be and i'll definitely be there to watch it happen <laughs> i appreciate it man thank right. you so much thank you, you guys. Take care. Have a good one. all right thank you you too bye-bye